Alright, today I'm reviewing the redesigned Asus Sapphire G16 for 2024. It is a fantastic laptop on almost every conceivable factor, except one. Its fan noise is very rough. It is consistently one of the loudest 16-inch laptops I've ever tested, whether you're doing performance tasks or just browsing the web. Anyone who plans to use this laptop in a quiet room or hates fan noise like I do, this isn't the laptop for you. If you are one of those people, please just skip ahead to the conclusion for the laptops I'd recommend instead. Now, the G16 actually has two different cooling solutions depending on which model you buy. The NVIDIA RTX 4050, 4060 and 4070 models have three fans, two at the back and an additional one deep inside the laptop. The 4080 and 4090 versions only have two fans but instead have a vapor chamber cooling solution. For thorough testing, we tested two G16s with the RTX 4070 and an additional third G16 with the 4080. In light use, like writing the script for this very video with nothing else running on the laptop, none of our G16s were ever quiet. If you think running in silent mode is going to help you, nope, you can still hear the fans going. If you disable the dedicated GPU while on silent mode, you will still hear the fans going, although they are a little quieter. I even tried significantly undervolting the CPU down to just 30 watts with my own manual fan curve. I still could not get it to be silent even for light tasks. As a point of comparison, Lenovo's new Yoga Pro 9i was very quiet for the same tasks and it's got the same hardware inside as our 4070 G16s. When running CPU performance tasks, there are two built-in modes, the default performance mode or turbo. According to our tests, turbo mode can drop to 100 watts and sustains around 80 on our 4080 unit. On our 4070 units, the CPU draws up to 75 watts. That's a big difference between the 4080 version and the ones with the 4070. The power fed to the processor is much higher on the 4080 version with the vapor chamber cooling solution. What's interesting is that even with all the additional power, it doesn't perform that much better. That's because according to our testing, these Intel Core Ultra processors have massive diminishing marginal returns once you feed them more than 55 watts. We can see this point reinforced with Lenovo's Yoga Pro 9i. It has the same processor, feeds it significantly less power, but still performs around the same. The unnecessary levels of power being fed to the G16's processor are likely a key reason why it has much louder fan noise and feels noticeably warmer to the touch than the Yoga Pro 9i. Switching to graphics performance, the G16 does have a MUX switch and supports Advanced Optimus. Let's start with the TimeSpy benchmark. The RTX 4070 in this laptop performs as we'd expect, around the same as the Yoga Pro 9i and the Legion Slim 7i and a little faster than the G14. That laptop feeds its 4070 less power though. The 4080 version however performs much better than the 4070, around a 25% improvement. However, it still doesn't come close to the Alienware X16's performance with the same 4080. Switching to Cyberpunk, where the DLSS is enabled or disabled, the G16 lags behind other competing laptops with these same components. So overall, it's not the best gaming performance we've seen with either of these GPUs. Looking at the temperatures you feel during gaming, we see a big difference. The 4080 version with its vapor chamber keeps the laptop cooler to the touch than the 4070 version. But the Yoga 9i is cooler again. And when it comes to fan noise, just like with CPU tasks, all versions of the G16 are very loud. Finally, I want to add one more additional and horrifying point about the fan noise. On the 4070 version, which has three fans, there are two distinct sounds emanating from it, a standard low whir and then a high-pitched whistle. I believe the whistle sound is due to constricted airflow to the third internal fan. On the 4080 version, which doesn't have that fan, you don't notice this. Regardless, the fan noise of the G16 on all units is higher pitched than other competing laptops and therefore much more noticeable at the same volume levels. This redesigned laptop looks stunning with its super thin aluminium chassis. We have the Eclipse Grey model, which looks nice enough, but it doesn't look quite as good as the Platinum White version. The light bar on the back, it looks silly and out of place, especially on this darker coloured version. It's loud and it just doesn't match the overall understated design aesthetic of the laptop. On the build quality, the G16 is almost as well built as the MacBook. Comparing the two together, the G16 does have a bit of lid flex and some minimal keyboard deck flex, which the MacBook doesn't have. But the G16 has rounded edges, so placing your palms on the edge of the laptop, it won't cut into your wrists like it does on the MacBook. This laptop is incredibly lightweight for one with a 16 inch display and powerful dedicated graphics. It's substantially lighter than the Yoga Pro 9i, the MacBook Pro 16 and even the new HP Spectre 16. This makes this laptop incredibly portable to carry around. 
The display is a stunning OLED panel with a wide color gamut, high resolution, and a fast refresh rate. It's also a variable refresh rate panel that supports G-Sync. It's bright enough at over 400 nits, but I would have liked more brightness for a laptop at this price point. Because of this, and the fact it's a glossy screen, you may see some reflections in a bright room. As the display's brightness, it isn't quite strong enough to fully overpower them. In good news, I didn't notice any graininess while staring at white content. Other recent laptops with OLED panels, if you stare at them from around 12 inches or less away, have had this issue. The keyboard is extremely comfortable, a good amount of travel with a satisfying click. The keyboard layout is also standard. It's one of the best I've used. That being said, the backlight of this keyboard does not fully light up the secondary functions of each key. In low lighting conditions, you'll struggle to see the FN numbers, for example. Normally, when a keyboard's backlight does not fully illuminate both characters, like on this one, I recommend you change the individual key's color to differentiate them. Unfortunately, the backlight is only a single color, so you just can't do that. You'll have to rely on squinting. The trackpad is almost perfect. Tracking is super accurate and I notice no palm rejection issues. The click though requires slightly more force than I'd like. The ports on this laptop are close to perfection. You've got all the ports you'll need. One Thunderbolt 4 port that supports the new DisplayPort 2.1 standard as well as 100 watt charging. You've got two USB-A ports, a second non-Thunderbolt USB-C port, an HDMI 2.1 port, and a headphone mic combo jack. And good news when it comes to that second USB-C port on the right side. One, if you use it to connect to a monitor, you'll get DisplayPort 1.4 direct to the dedicated GPU. So, full graphics performance with G-Sync. And two, unlike on the smaller G14, this port also supports charging. Yay! Having a charging capable port on both sides of the laptop is just definitely more convenient. Plus, this laptop has a full-sized fast UHS-2 SD card reader. The smaller G14 only had a micro SD card reader, so content creators will love the G16. The speakers are pretty good, the volume gets very loud, and the sound is clear enough. The MacBook Pro 16 does have a fuller sound and better bass reproduction, which makes it sound more natural. The Yoga Pro 9i, on the other hand, sounds a little worse than the G16. Its sound is more muffled and just not as loud. Here's how the webcam looks and sounds on the new Asus G16. The colors look really good, it's a very wide frame, but the audio, it sounds like I'm down a well. CP performance does seem to drop a bit while you're on battery, but it's still fast enough. To test doing high performance tasks on the laptop while on battery, which by the way, I don't recommend as it degrades your battery, we ran Cinebench on a loop for 30 minutes. We got around 60% remaining, which is about average. For a more realistic test, we played a Netflix movie on repeat over Wi-Fi for four hours. We got a decent result, almost 60% remaining, which indicates around 10 hours for this use case. It's similar to the Yoga Pro 9i, but way behind the MacBook Pro 16. Let's talk about upgradability. The memory unfortunately is soldered. The SSD is upgradable and there is a second spare slot. The Wi-Fi is also upgradable. Unfortunately though, it is Wi-Fi 6E and not the newer Wi-Fi 7. And there is no fingerprint reader in the power button. Pricing is on screen right now. You're looking at an MSRP price of $2,000. That's for the 4070 version with 16 gig of memory. And for $2,700, you can buy the 4080 version with 32. All right, let's wrap. This redesigned Asus Ophiris G16 is a fantastic laptop, if you can handle fan noise. It's super portable due to its small size and light weight. Everything about the laptop feels premium and it's powerful. However, due to its small size, there are sacrifices. Fan noise and the heat you feel are extremely rough, and both the RTX 4070 and 4080 versions perform worse in gaming than other laptops with the same hardware. That being said, if you can afford the 4080 version, it is a considerably better laptop, as you get much more graphics performance, significantly less heat you feel, and 32 gig of memory. And as I've talked about on this channel, Asus laptops frequently go on sale for around $200 to $400 off. So make sure you regularly check our website, as that's where we post the best deals that we can find on these laptops. If you do want a laptop like this one, but with much less fan noise and heat you feel, you have to buy either Lenovo's new Yoga Pro 9i 16 for 2024 or the MacBook Pro 16. The Yoga Pro 9i is a little larger and heavier than this one, but it has very similar performance to an equivalently spec G16 with a lot less fan noise. Unfortunately, at the time I'm publishing this video, it's not available yet. I do have a review out on it though, which you'll find in the description. Also, make sure you're subscribed to the channel with the notification bell on, as I'll let you know with a community post the moment that laptop becomes available. And as well, if Asus does anything to improve the fan noise of this one. 
That's all from me. Make sure to check out our new website where we list all the laptops we've tested and recommend for various types of users. Plus, it's got all the best prices that we can find on them. Until next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.